Dr. Samadhi, on, on, the, on a general level, I have a series of questions here that were handed to me by several members of the audience, so I wanted to make sure we got at least a couple of them. And some of them are very important, but still not clear and easy to answer. And that is, who should be screened for prostate cancer? If you're looking at the general population of patients, who do you recommend be screened with a PSA? And well, perhaps an examination. It's an excellent question. Um, the U.S. task force right now recommending uh, PSA screening starting at the age of 50. American Urologic Association is recommending PSA screening and the digital rectal exam starting the age of 45. My advice to people who are listening to this is that if you have a strong family history, if you have any genetic factors, if you're from African American side, start getting your baseline PSA at the age of 40 and make sure that you keep a copy of this because we need to look at the trend and follow up and see what the jumps are. So I normally screen in my practice baseline at the age of 40 and, and annually after that. So age 40 and the trend is key. It's not just one value, but multiple values over time. Absolutely. Dr. Samadhi, you also serve Mount Sinai in other ways, particularly helping us develop robotic surgery, which is really on the forefront of a lot of surgery in so many other ways. Can you tell us a little bit of what you think the future of robotic surgery is going to be in other areas of surgery? Well, I think that's a really appropriate question because when we started about five years ago, um, the, the program was just about to start. And again, what has happened besides the prostate cancer in the Department of Urology, we're very fortunate to have many other doctors, Dr. Polisi and Simon Hall. We're advancing this to kidney cancer. We're moving to bladder cancer, and we're able to do this robotically. Um, I've also have had a chance to work very closely with our GYN surgeons. So all the myomectomies uh, and hysterectomies are now being performed on Mount Sinai, now using the robot. So this is really expanding to many other departments. In the Department of Ears, Nose, and Throat, we're doing a lot of oral surgery. And of course, Dr. Marin has also recruited many great surgeons. Some of the thyroid and some of the other surgeries are being done through these robotics. So this is really going to expand in, in general surgery. I have a good colleague of mine, Dr. Key, who is starting to do a lot of bowel surgeries. So really, this is another instrument in the operating room. Just like the microscope, this is going to really go on through every specialty. But the key is to have expertise and the surgeons that are qualified to do this not to use this just as a toy, but to take our skills and improve on it and make sure that the patients are spending less time in the operating room with better quality of life. The future of this is going to train our surgeons in these simulation labs. Operating room is not going to be the place to practice. That's a valuable time. That's a valuable life. We will be practicing in these simulations. We will bring in the expertise of MRI and other images. And you can actually practice on the weekend the same surgery that you're going to be doing on Monday to make sure you're not going to make a mistake or cut a vessel in the kidney cancer or prostate. So I think the future is very bright. It's very exciting. This robot that you just saw uh, outside, we're able to bring the images of MRI and put, duplicate it on the prostate to be able to locate where the cancer is so we're not leaving any cancer behind. A very exciting time in medicine and certainly here at Mount Sinai.